Okay, so in this video, we want to look at what kind of information is provided by the first derivative about the graph of a function. So suppose that we look at a function that has a positive derivative. Then we know that if the derivative of a function is positive, then the function is increasing, but that's not enough to provide an accurate sketch of the graph of the function because the function could be increasing in two different ways. It could be increasing concave up like this or it could be increasing concave down like this. And so even though the first derivative tells us that by being positive the graph of the function is increasing, the first derivative cannot differentiate between increasing in a concave up fashion and increasing in a concave down fashion. The same can be said, of course, if the first derivative now is negative. Again, we have, as you can probably guess, the same two possibilities. We know that if the derivative of the function is negative, then the function is decreasing, but again, the graph could be decreasing concave up, or it could be decreasing concave down. So even though knowing that the derivative of the function is negative tells us that the graph of the function is decreasing, the first derivative cannot differentiate between decreasing concave up and decreasing concave down. And the last possibility, right, if the derivative is not positive and not negative, and assuming that the derivative exists, then the derivative must be zero. And the derivative is rarely zero over an entire interval, because that would imply that the slope is everywhere zero, therefore the function is constant everywhere. So the graph is simply a horizontal line. That's not very interesting. The derivative is more likely to be zero at a specific point or points. So let's assume here that we have a given value of x, say x zero, where at this point the derivative is zero. Let's see what this tells us about the function and how many possibilities there are when it comes to the shape of the graph of the function around the point x zero. And as we will see, there are, in this case, four distinct possibilities. So the first possibility is, and let's recall first that if the derivative of the function at a point is zero, then at that point the curve is flat, right? The derivative is the slope of the function. If the slope is zero, then you have a horizontal tangent line. So this is not the tangent line to the graph of our function at the point x zero. And a first possibility is that the curve is always concave up around the point x zero. Well, if the curve is always concave up around the point x zero and at x zero, the curve is flat because it has a slope of zero, then the only way this can play out is if the function looks like this concave up. At the point x zero, the curve becomes flat and remains concave up. This is the first possibility, and at this point, if you notice, the function attains its smallest y value, so this would be called a local minimum. Of course, there is another possibility. Again, at the point x0, since the derivative at this point is 0, the function has a slope of 0, therefore a horizontal tangent line. And now, instead of always being concave up around the point x0, the curve could be always concave down. 
So if the curve is always concave down around the point x0, and at the point x0, the function has a slope of 0, therefore a horizontal tangent line, then the graph of the function must look like this, concave down at the point x0, the curve is perfectly flat, therefore has a horizontal tangent line, and then past x0, the curve remains concave down. And if you notice, at the point x0, this is where the function attains its largest y value, so this point is called a local maximum. But of course, these are not the only two possibilities. The function doesn't always have to be concave up or concave down around a point. There could be a shift, a change, and these are also possibilities. Again, we have a horizontal tangent line at the point x0. So at this point, the curve is flat. And let's include the second picture right away. The same thing can be said. We have again a point x0 at which the curve has a horizontal tangent line, therefore it's flat. And concavity can change at this point. Right? The curve does not always have to be concave up or concave down. The curve could be first concave up, then at the point x0, perfectly flat, and then there could be a shift from concave up to concave down. And of course here we can have, as our last possibility, the complete opposite. The curve could be initially on the left of x0, concave down, at x0, the curve becomes perfectly flat, horizontal, since the derivative again is 0, and then there can be a shift, a change from concave down to concave up. And we have to emphasize, as in the previous two cases, where the derivative was positive and negative, the derivative could not differentiate between the curve being concave up or concave down. The same can be said of the third possibility when the derivative at a point is 0. All this tells us about the graph of the function is that at x0, since the derivative is equal to 0, then the slope of the function is 0, therefore the tangent line to the function at x0 is horizontal. So at x0, the graph of the function must be flat but what about the concavity of the function? It could be always concave up and produce a local minimum. It could always be concave down, produce a local maximum, or there could be a shift from concave up to concave down, or concave down to concave up. And the first derivative cannot differentiate between these four cases. So the question that we're left with is, well, clearly, as a simple observation, the first derivative is not providing us with enough information to sketch a graph of a function accurately, as it cannot differentiate between these two cases, in the case of a positive or negative derivative, and cannot differentiate between these four cases in the case of a derivative being equal to zero. So the question that we're left with is, well, what could give us this information? to tell us whether the curve is concave up or concave down. And as we will see in our next video, the answer lies in the second derivative to the function.